Only one tenth of one percent have been lost by strikes. Can you beat that? <laughs> those candidates who burst out in election year, election year affection for social legislation and for labor in general, still think that you ought to be good boys and stay out of politics. <laughs> and above all, they hate to see any working man or woman contribute a dollar bill to any wicked political party. <laughs> of course, it's all right for large financiers and industrialists and monopolists to contribute tens of thousands of dollars. But their solicitude for that dollar which the men and women in the ranks of labor contribute is always very touching. <laughs> they are, of course, perfectly willing to let you vote unless you happen to be a soldier or a sailor overseas or a merchant seaman carrying the munitions of war. In that case, they've made it pretty hard for you to vote at all. For there are some political candidates who think that they may have a chance of election if only the total vote is small enough. <laughs> and while I'm on the subject of voting, let me urge every American citizen, man and woman, to use your sacred privilege of voting, no matter which candidate you expect to support. Our millions of soldiers and sailors and merchant seamen have been handicapped or prevented from voting by those politicians, prevented from voting by those politicians and those candidates who think that they stand to lose by such votes. You here at home have the freedom of the ballot, irrespective of party. You should register and vote this November. I think that is a matter of plain good citizenship. Not to be washed away that easily. The opposition in this year has already imported into this campaign a very interesting thing because it's foreign. They have imported the propaganda technique invented by the dictators abroad. Remember, a number of years ago, there was a book, Mein Kampf, written by Hitler himself. The technique was all set out in Hitler's book, and it was copied by the aggressors of Italy and Japan. According to that technique, you should never use a small falsehood. Always a big one. <laughs> For its very fantastic nature would make it more credible. If only you keep repeating it over and over and over again. <laughs> simple illustrations that come to mind. For example, although I rubbed my eyes and I read it, we have been told that it was not a Republican depression, but a Democratic depression from which this nation was saved in 1933. <laughs> that this administration, this one, today, is responsible for all suffering and misery 
that the history books and the American people have always thought had been brought about during the 12 ill-fated years when the Republican Party was in power. Now, there's an old and somewhat lugubrious adage which says, never speak of a rope in the house of a man who's been hanged. <laughs> In the same way, if I were a Republican leader speaking to a uh, mixed audience, the last word in the whole dictionary that I would think of using is that word depression. <laughs> all the time. For another example, I learned much to my amazement that the policy of this administration was to keep men in the army when the war is over because there might be no jobs for them in civil life. Well, the very day that this fantastic charge was first made, a formal plan for the method of speedy discharge from the army had already been announced by the War Department, a plan based on the wishes of the soldiers themselves. This callous and brazen falsehood about demobilization was, of course, a very simple thing. It is an effort to stimulate fear among American mothers and wives and sweethearts. And incidentally, it was hardly calculated to boast the morale of our soldiers and sailors and airmen who are fighting our battles all over the world. And of a Republican victory this fall. a story that I'd left him behind on an Aleutian Island <laughs> and had sent a destroyer back to find him at a cost to the taxpayers of two or three or eight or twenty million dollars, his Scotch soul was furious. <laughs> no, police or the <laughs> He has not been the same dog since. <laughs> I am accustomed to hearing malicious falsehoods about myself, such as that old worm-eaten worm chestnut that I have represented myself as indispensable. But I think I have a right to resent, to object, to libelous statements about my dog. <laughs> country know the past too well to be deceived into forgetting. <clears throat> too much is at stake to forget. There are tasks ahead of us which we must now complete with the same will and the same skill and intelligence and devotion that have already led us so far along the road to victory. There is no task of finishing.